What up, Gotham Guardians and Arkham Adversaries? I'm your host, Trey, and welcome back to the Bat Channel, your main hub for all things Batman. I have a special giveaway for you guys. All you have to do is share this video and tweet my account, my personal account, at Trey Austin Music, or if you're on Facebook, just tag the Bat Channel. We'll put all those in the description below. If you guys share it and tag me, I'll randomly pick one of you to receive this really cool poster from Victor Koo, who was personally chosen from Zack Snyder himself for the winner of the Fan Justice League poster. Here it is right here. This video right now doesn't do it quite justice, but it has that metallic look to it. It's going to be it's so cool. I have one myself. I even have the really big one in my room. This could be yours. All you have to do is share the video. Thank you guys so much for your support. Question. How do we call? He gave us a signal. just couldn't get enough, could you? You wanted to come back for the comic segment part two. So let's not waste your time. Let, let's just go get into it. Let's find out what's going on in Joker Ward. Joker Ward, part three, continues in Batman number 97. Once again, written by the man James Tinian, artist Jorge Jimenez, and the cover is by Tomei Murray and Gilliam March and, for, you know, varying cover by Francisco Mantini. You know how I feel about Francisco Mantini. He's, like, brilliant. Recap from issue 96 to get you guys caught up. Where we last left Batman at Monarch Theater, where he finds himself in a room full of Joker victims, the civilians that Batman has failed to save, and they have now risen from the dead. In issue 97, we start with an overview of Gotham City's current situation. In Tricorner Yards, Punchline is with the Underbroker gathering canisters full of Joker's toxin, where they will be taken to Ace Chemicals to be cooked with a new toxin formula that Punchline made, that awful one that's still affecting Batman. Which, I guess, Ace you know, Chemicals is in the Narrows, where many clowns have been mysteriously murdered and really has the Joker gained scared. Well, we know who's in the Narrows killing clowns, folks. The new bat-wielding vigilante known as Clown Hunter. <laughs> this, is, this guy's wacky looking. I love it. And he is making quite a name for himself as he has cornered a couple of Joker thugs who are trapped in a Batmobile. <laughs> Clown Hunter used a transformer and a fire hydrant to short circuit the Batmobile. Now the clowns still feel safe and confident that Clown Hunter can't get to them. Well, they must have missed the little, you know, break in the, you know, window. <laughs> Man. You know what I mean? <laughs> Those idiots. Clown Hunter takes this tank of gasoline and pours it into the windshield and sets a match and just lets it go a blazing inside with the guys just cooking in there. <laughs> Ooh, he's cool. Very ruthless. 
we go back to Punchline, and as she's trying to get the men back in check, and by assuring them that there's someone way worse that they have to fear, and that's the Joker who's going to kill the Batman. Like, who do you want to deal with? Clown Hunter is killing a bunch of thugs, or the dude is going to beat the guy who has taken all of them on. Good luck. Hey, they laughed at Louis Armstrong when he said he was going to go to the moon. Now he's up there, laughing at them. We now go back to the Batman, facing his failures trying to rip him apart, literally. During Batman's battle with the mob of the undead, Joker's taunting him, you know, through the theater screen, and pokes at his childhood trauma, <laughs> assuring Batman that he will have all of Gotham to witness and know Bruce's failures, and to have them a part of the memory that made the boy the hero that failed them. Joker's getting like, he's getting deep. He's gotten deep. That's how it starts. The fever, the rage, the feeling of powerlessness that turns good men cruel. Batman's still under the influence of that new punchline toxin. He's hearing Alfred trying to, to keep him focused and, you know, aware of his surroundings because as Batman's like fighting all these guys they're like turning you know he's visualizing that they're actually becoming the Joker rather than just some undead people so Alfred's trying to keep Bruce grounded as you know the toxins overpowering Batman's senses and it and it, Batman's just like losing his mind at, at some point he literally just throws a battery and blows up the theater screen and you know just shouting I said shut up, you know, it just, you can tell Batman's like on the edge. <laughs> I said, leave me alone! But Matt, you know, Batman can no longer trust his eyes as all the victims were becoming Joker, so he blindfolds himself and focuses and homes in on his acute senses, because, you know, a good bat knows how to fight blind, and you certainly know Batman does. This is just dumb. I can't see a thing. You gotta feel the road. You gotta, you gotta let it live inside you. Are you feeling anything now? I'm feeling a little bit. Are you? What are you feeling? Tell me what you're feeling. I'm feeling the, the worn wood of the steering wheel. Yeah. What else? A little bit of heat. That's you and the car melded together. Yeah. Now I'm really yeah. feeling it. Yeah. I feel like the car could drive itself. I bet it could. Start her up. I'll start this car up. Yeah, boy. All right, so drive. As Batman reaches the center of the battlefield, he uses an EMP to take out the mob. He succeeds, but he is weak. As he exits Monarch Theater onto the street, he hallucinates. His parents walking down Crime Alley. In horror, he yells to them to turn back, but of course he faints. <laughs> Once again, luckily for him, Harley Quinn is there to rescue him. We now go to the Joker, who is enjoying the finer things in life. Honestly, his look kind of reminds me of Jared Leto's Joker in Suicide Squad. Very it has that reminiscence, so you know, with the robe and thing that he has going on. But Punchline joins him at the top of this penthouse as they enjoy the view of a burning Gotham. Some men aren't looking for anything logical, like money. They can't be bought, bullied reasoned or negotiated with some men just want to watch the world burn as joker savors the moment of anarchy punchline wants to address the vigilante that is killing their men in the narrows clown hunter Th this next part is like so cool i got i got like chills like reading it joker tells punchline how wonderful it is that his plan of chaos is is working Batman's rule book of no killing is being thrown out the window by the people who look up to him as the symbol of hope and that they can take back their city by following his example. Well, the people of Gotham have had enough. They're, they're ready to start killing as well. 
to, to take care of the Joker problem, the Joker infestation. <laughs> but they still plan to make an example of the kid and tells Punchline to send in the big guns and crucify the clown hunter. But that's not all. He also wants Punchline to finally take out his former fling, Harley Quinn. And he is going to tell her how to do it. Batman wakes up in Eden, a place that uh, Ivy has created in Gotham. Kind of a, a paradise that Harley Quinn takes him to because she believes it's going to help rehabilitate him like it did for her when Joker poisoned her some time ago. To help him, she hands him this cup of medicine and tells him to drink it because it'll counter, you know, the effects of the Joker toxin. Mm. Unfortunately, to do that, this drink has a bit of a side effect. <laughs> it's going to make him completely trip out harder before it allows him to pass out and, you know, be rid of that toxin. <laughs> so he has a major hallucination and finds an old friend and mentor awaiting him. Alfred is there to have a serious chat. <laughs> This is such a fun comic. I can't wait until the next, you know, Jerk of War Part 4 comes out. The tie-ins have been wonderful. As you guys may have heard, DC Fandom split up the content of the weekend. So a lot of the comic book, I guess you could say, content was pushed back to September 12th. So we're going to have a lot more to talk about. Speaking of something that just, you know, is something to talk about and, like, just came out... I just picked mine up from Hall of Justice Comics and Collectibles. I started reading it, haven't finished it yet, but guys, from the very few pages I've, I've read, first off, the artwork by Jason Fabach is phenomenal. Like, it is so cool. Su such a cool comic. Already, the tone, whew, it's going to be a darn good comic. If you haven't picked yours up yet, Find your local comic book shop. You can use my guys at Hall of Justice Comic and Collectibles. They do a live stream sale on Mondays and Thursdays from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. This is a comic, guys, you're not going to want to miss. So make sure you pick yours up. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all your support. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and share with your fellow Bat family. I'm your host, Trey, and don't forget to tune in next week. Same Bat time, same Bat channel.